Hi friends, greetings to you in Jesus name. Today I want to talk to you about a particular theme that are very important for everyone. Prepare to meet your God. Just to base my thought upon a particular verse, let me read from the prophecy of Amos, 4th chapter, 12th verse. Therefore, thus will I do unto you, O Israel, and because I will do this unto you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Amos was not a prophet. He was not the son of a prophet. So if you read uh, 7th chapter 14 and 15 the verses, he says, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock and the Lord told me, Go, prophecy unto my people Israel. Now the people of Israel, when they had been brought into the promised land, they did not follow the Lord. They did not want to follow the commandments given to them through Moses and others. They did not want to follow. What happened was they continued to commit sin against God and the Lord was very unhappy. He was sending punishment after punishment and calamities upon these people. And there what happened is God told Amos to go and tell the people of Israel that they've been sinning against God and that God gives them a chance. God could have destroyed everyone. But God gives a chance to people so that they may prepare themselves and meet God and repent and meet God. So God is willing to reveal himself to people when they prepare themselves to come closer to God. God has revealed his son Jesus Christ to us and Jesus was born as a man. He wanted to deliver as a man. We cannot see God. We are to meet God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, he was a begotten son of God. When we say begotten in Greek, it is monogenes. That means one of a kind, one of a kind. There is nobody who was born like the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. It is a sui generis act that is something that never will happen again, something that never happened before. So Jesus, the Son of God, came into this world. We had to prepare ourselves to meet him. Jesus was the only person, Jesus is the only person who can call God Daddy. Angels cannot call God Daddy. We cannot call God Daddy. We have to call God Abba Father. We are adopted children of God through the Lord Jesus Christ and also by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit. We are adopted. So we must understand these things. And the question is, are we prepared to meet the Lord? Colossians 1st chapter 15 and 17, if you read about Jesus, it is written, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. Jesus said, He who has seen me has seen my Father. It is imperative that we prepare ourselves to meet the Lord. Now the question is, have you prepared yourself to receive the Lord Jesus in your life? The title of my message is, Prepare to Meet Your God. The birth of Jesus was not revealed to everybody. Only prepared people could meet the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I want to just present this message under four sections. Section 1, people who prepared themselves to meet the Lord. For example, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, the husband of Mary, the shepherds, Simeon and Hannah in the temple, the home that received the Lord Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, and also the wise men. Section 2, I will be dealing with people who are not ready to meet the Lord, Herod the king, people of Jerusalem, high priests, and the other scribes. The section 3, how about you? Prepare yourself to meet your Savior. The section 4, prepare to meet your judge. The Lord Jesus is going to come back as a judge. When you look at the people who prepare themselves to meet, meet the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell first about Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. She was there in her own home, and the angel Gabriel came and spoke to her and said, The rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was troubled. She saw the angelic visitation and the declaration from the angel. Then the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And she said, How do I, how can I understand it? I do not know a man. Then the angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the shadow of the Almighty will come upon you, and because of that, that which is born in you shall be called the Son of God. Her response was, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Total yieldedness. She knew the eventuality of getting pregnant before marriage. She knew about it, the social eventuality. Still, she was yielded to God because God gave the word through angel and she was willing to yield herself totally. And Mary's 
Dule in Greek meaning a female slave. She submitted herself to God's plan. When Jesus was born, the word of God says, she brought forth her firstborn. It is said that no human eye saw Jesus being born. It is so divine. So she brought forth her own firstborn. And it is said, legendarily it is said, that she was keeping the little baby in her hand and she was sobbing and said, Oh my son, my son, my body had been crushed. I had to bleed to bring you forth into this world. Would you also have to die bleeding for the people of the world? to bring salvation to them. As she was crying, her tears fell upon the face of baby Jesus and he opened his mouth and gave a toothless smile. This is what legend says. Mary knew the eventuality of getting pregnant out of marriage, but still she was yielded. She saw the Lord Jesus Christ. What about Joseph, husband of Mary? When Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, he came to know that she was with child. And according to Mosaic law, such people must be stoned. So he wanted to put her away privately. As he thought on these things, suddenly the angel of the Lord came and said, Do not hesitate to take Mary as your wife, because that which is conceived in her, her is of the Holy Spirit. And he shall be called a son of God. So he was totally yielded. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And the angel was referring to the Old Testament um, prophecy about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He woke from his sleep. He received Mary, did not know her till Jesus was born. We don't read any word that Joseph spoke. But as he thought thereon, the angel of the Lord came. I would say that he had thoughtful prayers and prayerful thoughts. We need to develop prayerful thoughts and thoughtful prayers. Our thoughts can be prayers. Here we see... This man Joseph was able to prepare himself and he was able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was born, he took him in his hand and the legend says that he had a, he had a vision of the Lord Jesus dying on the cross and he was being brought down and there was a, a cave there, a grave there and his body was put there, rolled into it, he had a dream and light came out of it. He was so full of sorrow and anguish about the future of this little baby that was born in his family. But still, he was a guardian. He never would have allowed him, him to call himself as daddy. So he knew who Jesus was. He was prepared and he was able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. The third point that I want to place before is the shepherds. The shepherds were considered to be lower class people in, in the Jewish community. They were considered as garbage gatherers. But still, God took care of them. And suddenly, as they were taking care of their own sheep at night, there came an angel, and he began to say, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an explosion in heaven and many angels came down there. They began to sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. When these shepherds were given this spectacular revelation of Jesus, they were ready. Why did God choose these shepherds, people in the lower realm of society, to reveal his son? Once this revelation came, they said, let us go and see what God has told us. They, when they saw the baby, they began to publicize about it. People were very, very glad. Jesus humbled himself. He forsook the heavenly glory. He humbled himself. He was born as a man. And he called himself shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I am the great shepherd. Jesus humbled himself and he became a shepherd. These shepherds were ready to see Jesus because the revelation came. It was more than enough for them to prepare themselves. They left all the sheep in the wilderness. They went and saw the Lord Jesus Christ. The story of one shepherd, one among the shepherd, who speaks about the baby Jesus whom he saw. He says, he looked like any other baby. But when a person looks at the eyes of the Lord Jesus, it will be as if looking at eternity. All the needs of his heart will be revealed. This man was longing to see Jesus again. Of course, he had to come back from Bethlehem to take care of his own sheep. Years later, he was still looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. The legend says that he saw the Lord Jesus on the cross. 
he recognized Jesus on the cross. Unless you prepare yourself, you can never meet the Lord Jesus Christ. You may celebrate Christmas and have all the joy of Christmas celebration, but if you are not prepared, you will never meet the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was born, after the days of purification were over, according to the law of Moses, the baby Jesus was taken to the temple at Jerusalem. And they wanted to offer uh, sacrifices there. And there was one person called Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. He came to the temple moved by the Holy Spirit. And he was able to identify little Jesus, little baby, the Savior of the world. And he took him in his hand and he began to say, Lord, now we are letting your servant depart in peace according to your own word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared before the face of all the people. Now just imagine, this man, Simeon, an old man, a devout man, who was led by the Holy Spirit. He came into the temple and he was able to recognize baby Jesus among all the other babies who would have been there. And he took the baby Jesus in his hands and he was able to rejoice. He began to prophesy about many things about Jesus to Mary. And Mary kept everything in her own heart. He told Mary, your sword shall pierce your heart also. It was, a, it was a prophetic word for Mary. Jesus was born in the womb of Mary. Jesus was born in the heart of Mary at the cross. When Jesus spoke to Mary and said, Woman, behold your son. He was referring to John. At that time when Jesus called her woman, what happened in the heart of Mary? A sword pierced her soul. She understood that her own son, the first son, the beautiful good son, she lost the first son and received the Savior. So Jesus was born in the heart of Mary at the cross. She prepared herself. All that Jesus spoke, all others spoke about Jesus, she kept in her heart, meditated upon them. She did not throw those things away. So she was able to understand the, what God had prepared for her. And here we see Simeon speaking to Mary, prophesying about Mary. I imagine Simeon would have gone home an old man. He would have slept nicely. He would have waken up in eternity. He would have gone to God the Father and said, Father, I took your son Jesus in my hand. I took the Savior in my hand. Dear friends, unless you are ready, unless you prepare yourself, you can never meet the Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth point that I want to place before you is the home that received Jesus Christ first. Matthew's Gospel, 2nd chapter 10 and 11, if you read, we see wise men coming into Bethlehem. They were looking for Jesus, the, the King of the Jews. And they came into a house, saw the baby Jesus and Mary, fell down and worshipped him, worshipped Jesus. And offered frankincense, myrrh and gold and then worshipped him, gave these offerings to him and worshipped him. How did they come there? God let light to us there to lead them to the house. This was the first house that received Jesus. It was a house where worship began. Names of those people who are in the house is not, not given. I just began to surmise. Jesus was born in a street maybe and he was laid in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. And uh, maybe there was a little boy or a girl who went by that would have heard the cry of the Lord Jesus. And they would have told parents and they would have come and re receive these people, Mary, Joseph and Jesus into their own home. Jesus was growing there maybe for two years. And the, the people in the house heard the first words of baby Jesus. And when wise men came there, they understood who Jesus was. They would have begun to worship the Lord there. So it was a place where the angels could visit. It was a place visited by wise men. It was a place where warning could be given to Joseph and also to the wise men. It was a house where these things happened. So, if you receive Jesus in your own heart as a prepared person, your own home shall be like the first home that received Jesus in Bethlehem. Moving on, I want to talk about the wise men. The wise men had, been, had seen the star in the east when Jesus was born. They were following the star for, for nearly two years. They came to Jerusalem. They thought the king of Jews will be born in uh, the king's palace. They came to Herod's palace. They made the inquiry about it. But then when they came there, they lost the guidelines from the star. But later, when they came out, they found the star that was guiding them for a long time. They were following the star. They prepared themselves. They had to travel for nearly 2,000 kilometers. That is what people say. They came and saw the baby Jesus because they were ready. They fell on their faces and worshipped him. During Christmas, are you longing to see Jesus? What offering will they give him? 
the offering that Jesus wants you to give him is your own heart. If you have not accepted Jesus as a savior. So when you get ready, when you are able to prepare yourself, you will definitely be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. These wise men were led by the Lord. Herod had said, you go and see the baby and come. I will come and worship the baby. But God said, no, don't go to Herod. They were able to go to their own place in a different route. So when you see Jesus, you will be led by the Holy Spirit. You will be led by the power of the Lord. Why to go, what to do, what not to do. In the section 2, I want to talk about people who were not ready to meet the Lord. Say, for example, Herod the Great. He said, if you read Matthew's Gospel, 2nd chapter 7, 8, 12, and 16th verses, if you read, that Herod spoke to these people, the wise men, secretly and said, go and search for the baby. Once you find the baby, come and tell me. I will come and worship him also. He was not willing to worship the Lord. He was not longing to worship the Lord. He wanted to kill the baby. He never saw the baby Jesus in his life. So when the wise men had gone back to their own land in a different route, he got so angry and he killed all the male children in Bethlehem below two years. He never saw the Lord Jesus because his heart was not ready. The report about Herod the Great's death given by Josephus, there he says, this man had a very terrible death. A loathsome disease descended upon the ruler as a judgment from God on account of his sins. He describes his horrible details, burning fever, ulcerated entrails, foul discharges, convulsions and stench. He died a miserable death. He was not ready. He was not able to meet the Lord. And when the wise men came and told Herod about the baby being born, the people at Jerusalem were troubled. Many big, big people there were troubled. And some of these people would have been standing before Pilate later when Pilate offered to release Jesus on that particular day. They said, away with him, crucify him, given to us Barabbas. And all these people who were persuading Pilate to crucify Jesus, they would have died in AD 70 when there was a Roman invasion. These men did not see the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. They did not see. Though some of them saw Jesus, they did not understand who he was because they were not ready. And also the high priest and the scribes who were there at that time when Jesus was born, they also did not prepare themselves. The, the high priest was Joazer ben Boethus. He and other scribes who were there, they also never came to see Jesus. Later we see Annan Caiaphas, high priest, they saw Jesus, they did not accept him, they were not preparing themselves to meet God. Now you may hear about the Lord Jesus Christ, you may attend a lot of services every, every Sunday, but are you preparing yourself to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? The third section that you want to tell you is prepared to meet your Savior. Today's day of salvation. If you have not prepared yourself, you will never meet him. It is imperative that you prepare yourself to meet God, meet the Savior. Then if you as a person in your own home, if you prepare yourself to meet the Lord Jesus, you will be persuading, you will be helping your own family members to come closer to the Lord. What you should do, meditate upon God's word, prepare yourself, choose to be away from the things of this world, choose to be away from the evil of this world so that you will be able to meet the Lord. The section four that I want to tell you is prepare yourself to meet your judge. Today Jesus is the savior of the world. He is going to come back again as the judge of the whole human race. Now, if you are a person who has received salvation of the Lord, you will have to be careful to walk in the will of God. John in his own epistle writes, The anointing that you receive of the Lord abides in you, and the anointing guides you in everything. Anointing will not speak a lie. As the anointing teaches you, abide in Christ, so that when Jesus comes back, you will not be ashamed. Simple salvation is not enough. You'll have to know the Lord in a better way. You'll have to walk in the presence of God all the days of your life. So prepare yourself to meet the judge on that particular day. When Jesus comes back, if a testimony is clear, if you're a person who is walking in the light of God, you will be so happy. So prepare to meet the Lord how the anointing of the Holy Spirit is needed. If you look at the parable of the ten virgins spoken by Jesus, you read it in Matthew's Gospel, 25th chapter, verses 1 to 13. There the Lord Jesus speaks about his coming. Then the kingdom of heaven is likened to ten virgins who are willing to meet the bridegroom. He speaks about his coming. Five were foolish, five were wise. The foolish virgins had some oil and when the delay was there, when the bridegroom delayed, they all slept. But the wise virgins, they had extra oil. That speaks about the Holy Spirit. 
So when suddenly at the midnight there is a cry, the bridegroom is coming. So they all woke up, they began to tend their own lamb. These wise virgins, they had sufficient oil. Others had no oil. They had to go and buy oil from others. You know, even now, nowadays there are people who sell anointing. Evil people, false prophets who sell anointing for money. No, such anointing will not take you to heaven. What is needed? Filling your life with the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled by the Holy Spirit. The meaning is to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit on daily basis. Initial salvation is not enough. You let to be filled by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Holy Spirit will not come and dwell in you if your whole life is full of evil of this world. What is needed? Daily cleansing is needed. Keep your conscience clean. Long for the anointing with the Holy Spirit. If you have to meet the Savior on that particular day, when he comes back to this earth as a judge, what is needed? Preparation of anointing. If your anointing is not there, when Jesus comes back, if you try to go and buy anointing, you will not be able to enter in. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him for the wedding, and the door was shut. Others came and said, Open unto us, O Lord. Then Jesus said, I don't know you. What is your condition today? Are you preparing yourself to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? Be ready anytime. You know, Jesus' is coming may be delayed. But your death or my death ha can happen any time. We may be called to meet the Lord any time. Jesus said, what I say unto all, I say unto you, watch. Be ready. Watch and pray. So watch and pray. Watch in prayer and pray and watch. So when you are able to pray sincerely by the Holy Spirit, we do not know how to pray as we ought to pray. When you pray with all your heart, keeping a clean conscience, you will be ready any time to meet the Savior. He will take us to a place that is preparing for us. The word of God comes to you today. Be ready to meet your Savior. If not, you'll have to meet the judge on that particular day. So unless you prepare yourself, you will not be able to meet the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So this is very imperative, and I encourage all of you to come closer to the Lord. Be ready any time. Be ready on a daily basis. Years back there was in somewhere in Europe, there was a little boy, who a poor boy, he was an orphan, and he was standing near a, near a hotel. And a captain had uh, come to that particular city. He berthed his ship in the harbor. He came to the hotel. He saw this boy. He's a bright-faced boy. Joy was on his face, but his whole body was full of rags. And he took pity upon this boy and said, uh, if you are neatly dressed, I would have taken you to the uh, hotel. This boy just was I mean, patting over his dress and said, I'm ready now. So looking at the bright uh, aspect of this boy, the um, captain took him into the hotel, gave him food, spoke to him, and then he understood that this boy was an orphan. He had nowhere to stay. He used to do some odd jobs here and there, and he was all alone. So he took pity on him and said, if you are neatly dressed, or maybe some dress is there, I would have taken you to the ship. This boy said, I am ready now. So because of his love for this little boy, the captain took him, to a uh, shop, got the dress that are needed, took him to the ship. This boy was a bright person. Wherever he used to go, he used to be always encouraging others because Jesus was in his heart. So I do not know his name. And people used to call him ready now. For anything, he was ready. So his name was ready now. As they were traveling in the ship for a long time, this boy became sick. And the doctor who was in the, um, in the ship, he came and um, checked this boy and told the captain, this boy is dying. The sickness is terminal. And as this little boy was in his cabin, in his bed, dying, the captain came and knelt by the bed, took hold of this boy's hand and said, I'm so sad that you, you are in this position. This boy said, I'm ready now to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And he turned to this captain, this boy said, what about you? Why are you not getting ready to meet the Lord? And this man said, I'll think about it. I, I know that you've been telling about Jesus. And because of this boy, many people in that ship had come to know the Lord Jesus. And this captain said, I will definitely think about your proposal that I should receive Jesus. I'll think about it. And this boy said, holding on to his hand, he said, I'm going to meet the Lord. I'm ready now. I want to tell the Lord Jesus that you're also ready to meet him. And as this boy was dying, this man took hold of his hands and he wept at the bed and said, Lord, I'm ready now. I come to you. Your future is in jeopardy if you're not ready. Prepare to meet your Lord.